Okay, so uh, we're going to start the meeting and uh, we're going to change the agenda around. We uh, uh, had you down to number seven, but we're going to make it number one. Okay. And, uh, um, and so we're going to go into the town garage painting and final invoice review. So uh, you received the um, punch list, right, of stuff at the, yeah. that Mark and... Uh, uh, I guess basically Mark went over, right? Mark yeah. and I. You did, I, yeah. I it up, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, comments? Um, I just, I guess basically uh, we used what we had for a budget. Um, and basically, uh, you know, I, I originally thought we were going to do everything, um, doors included, but then that decided not to happen. Um, so we used up what we had for the budget. Uh, didn't quite cut, didn't have enough. Um, so I guess looking for direction from here. Okay. Rough idea, cost to, to finish. Based on that punch list, Bucky, what uh, what do you think it would cost to finish up? Um. For just the paint, um, I don't I don't have the punch list up in front of me, but uh, I could get the video on my screen. But um, just for the painting, um, I know it it took fifty six gallons uh, to do what I've done so far. Uh, Eleven pails at two hundred a pail came out to twenty two forty, uh, with what I, where I'm at right now. Um, so depending on how much more you wanted another whole coat over everything or you want just the selected areas um i guess is what i'm looking at to know what how much other you know you'd like to see painted uh, basically i mean there's some areas that are co covered pretty well i think it's where uh, um some of it was done with brush and some of it was sprayed right yeah uh, we start we were going to start it with a roll but it was taking so much we ended up uh, spraying after that and uh, that seemed to cover really really good um, and uh, the I, I would say that back the front side worked really good the gable on the office side came out good um, just that back uh, part where the actual garage is not the office back but the the garage that goes you know the back end towards the the sand pile there yeah. Now, what happened with that uh, fascia board there as you face that gable and uh, on the right hand side there? Uh, did it just didn't take or I'm just wondering about that. One of the first things I kind of noticed was that. And then uh, another thing, too, that might benefit you uh, uh, when doing it. I, uh, I had to spray a pretty porous surface when I did the... Um, the old St. John's Church, which is now Jenna's Promise down there, that was all stucco when I had to spray the whole thing. What I did yeah. is spray it, and then I immediately rolled it afterwards. And, okay. Uh, and using the spray as a supply, and I just rolled it out afterwards. I had a two-foot roll. That wouldn't work in, in this case, but because of the batten boards on it. But um, right. if, uh, if you just, uh, when, if you were going to spray it again, just roll it at the same time. Okay. And, uh, I think that would uh, uh, meet the needs uh, to cover everything, uh, what we'd like to see, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the FASA board on the, the east side and the back basically is what we're looking at right now. And the one, this, this gable in on this side towards the office building there, there was some areas that Looks like it was sprayed in one direction, and then the, some of the batten boards were uh, were missed. And again, that okay. could, that could be rectified with uh, a roller um, and yeah. just spray and roll. And okay. I, I think you'd be pretty impressed with the outcome of of that and how it would turn out. Okay. On there, but okay. uh, so. Right. With, I think that, just for clarity, there's a punch list number punch list yeah and so we so should be there. things will stay on there or they won't i, I, I was uh i, I was uh, trying it. to find that punch list and i haven't been able oh, to I can get it. yeah we're going to get that punch list up here so well, screen. yeah just trying to think of how we 
know if it's done or not. Yeah, exactly. Can you see that, Buck? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll just take each one of them and go down through it. And uh, so okay. the north, north end has uh, two-tone coloring, darker color area. Says about 40 to 50 percent of the north side wall appears to need a second coat. Yeah, and that's what we just discussed. Uh, east end, uh, again, the same thing, mostly painting. Um, and the fascia board on number three should have two coats on it because it looks like it, it uh, okay. hadn't been done. And then the south side, uh, the gray uh, tone edge uh, uh, where it meets the uh, light gray um, and some light uh, sections are very light and appear to need a second coat. Okay. So it's pretty, pretty much all painting type stuff. Um, yeah. And um, what I'd like you to do, if you could, Buck, is just to get for it, it's written here, but to get some perfect clarity, try to meet with Mark and, and Ron at some point and just get exactly what you would do. Then give us a list of what you think it's going to take for paint and how much more it's going to cost. Okay. Okay. That sounds I can do that. That sounds reasonable? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then uh, what's down below there? It says due to planned overspray. Yeah, you had some overspray on some of the doors, but you said that some, at one point they were going to paint the doors? Well, I had asked, and then by the time I actually got an answer, um, I had already had some paint on there. So, um, you know, I, I, I had thought in the beginning we were going to do everything, but then uh, as we got talking, the, the doors, I have the message from Mark saying they weren't need, didn't need to be done. So uh, I was at that point, it was kind of a point of no return at that point. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just a little backstory on that. So when the um, overspray occurred, which when Mark saw it, we weren't sure if adding more paint to the doors was okay with the door vendor warranties and we didn't want to get into that because he was busy working with that. could the doors have been lifted up to get out of the way probably but they didn't happen because of the schedule with Bucky coming in on weekends or nights or whatever and garage locked or not locked so that didn't happen the, the fix really is talking to the door people and getting their either they're okay or have them come paint the door the doors I, I don't have enough overhead doors I just know that's a metal surface that may or may not hold certain paint. I don't like it enough. Depends on the door, and some of them are just primed. That that's a white primer, basically. Yeah. I've seen when I've uh, I used to work with um, uh, Wade Simpson and uh, their doors and stuff like that. Most of the time, it came through with a primer, with the intent to uh, change the color if you wanted to, just you know, spray it type of thing. Um, so we might take that on our own, or we can check out the door thing and then have Bucky add that onto his pole. That's a choice. So how's that, Buck? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So I'll let you work that out with Mark and Ron. Okay. And, uh, uh, just give us an update when you come to some sort of conclusion <coughs> and, uh, and uh, a date or a time when you think you'll have it done. Okay. Yep. I. Uh... I figured this way I knew now what you know you guys were, were thinking and we're on the same page and uh, I'll have some numbers tomorrow. Okay. Do we want to release any of the 4915 or partial of it or whatever? Um, I know that if you're going to continue with Bucky, he's completed this work and now we're doing another change order, number three. Um, so I don't know if you I'm just bring that up to say it. If you're, if you're not rejecting all the work, then he's owed the money that he originally bid and you're changing that bid now. So we need a motion just to 
if you want to to release the, to release the the funds that are owed in yeah current. usually it keeps on retainage you know? i was just gonna say 10 percent is normal yeah so yeah. maybe maybe keep 10 percent until the punch list is done yeah keep 500 in there and uh release the rest on the cut yeah 44 9 15. so everything else has been done yeah everything else yeah. on the list has been done this okay is the, this is the punch list too. we're just the painting is what needs to be the touch up the final one you used like you said Workshop. So that's included in the 4100. That's what he did do. That's what he used already. But the punch list is additional. Yeah. Why is it additional? Because he ran out of the quoted paint that he he, he basically said that I'm paraphrasing Bucky, but he basically under underbid or under whatever because that material is sucking so much paint, which wasn't anticipated. That basically ran out of his budget. One he, of I think if the surface was prepared properly, like you normally would, with the, that, that extra time in there, mm -hmm. I think the bid would have been okay if the wood was primed. It's probably forty years old, like a sponge. So that maybe it could have been anticipated by the contractor. Probably should have been. Should so they could have advised the bid, but he had the sole bid, so right. I got to work with Bucky at this point. Okay, so I'm that, fine. I'm that fine with sense. it. Okay. Well. Except for the painting, we're releasing. Everything. We're going to get a new. No, we'll release forty-four fifteen. Keep. Five then they're going to get another bid. For release that. ninety percent. Got yeah. it. Yeah. And then we'll get another add-on with a dollar amount uh, for your approval of the next year. We need a motion for that. Yeah, I need a motion so Jen can process the check. Uh, forty-four fifteen. Well, well, I'll make a motion to pay the forty-one hundred. And hold ten percent. Well, uh, forty nine hundred. Uh, yeah. Forty nine. Yes. Yeah, so oh, right. No, I know, Roland. You're looking at the change order number uh, number three there, item three. Is He's completed one? the work for to be paid the forty nine fifteen. Okay. So make a motion to pay ninety percent of the completed work. Yeah. Make well, you just did. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 In the original quote, did he quote how much paint he planned on using? 1875. But that stuff does suck. Yeah. So, Buck, did you hear what, what happened? We, uh, yeah. Yeah, we approved 90% uh, of the 49,115. Thank you. So, and when did you start this project? You've been on it for, well, part time trying to get it completed. Yeah. 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 Um, I would, so I would say within, I'm now I will, we'll have this done by, uh, by this coming Monday. Well, you're going to have to still find time to meet with Ron and Mark just to make sure. Well, yeah, I was going to give them some, some, uh, that at least my, at least the, the additional stuff and, and come to an agreement by Monday and then, um, give me a week to finish up. Okay. Yeah. When will they release the chart? Okay. Okay. So we look forward to hearing from you. Yes, sir. Struggling forward, and uh, good. And we'll, we'll hope for some uh, good weather too. Yeah, yeah. I had some rain today. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So, but anyways, and Ron keeps talking freaking hurricanes. So. Yeah. Okay. Right. We'll hope that'll hold off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, Buck. Any other hey, thing thanks. you think we can help you with or anything? What What's that? Anything else we can do with for you or anything? No, I think that's good, guys. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we'll be talking soon. All righty, sir. Perfect. Good evening. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Let's do the town assessor error and omission. Found another one? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it is actually one. Yeah, it is just one. Okay. Yeah.
I like the wording behind it, no value change. Yeah, exactly. Eight. This is it? Yeah. This can, this can happen all the way through December 31st, but we don't know. As we're going through and checking. Sure. All right. Do, can, you, can you just tell me what it kind of is? Well, when they go through with the audit and they, they check to see what's, uh, uh, if they find an error yeah. in there, that's, that's on the tax it. sale, on the tax yeah. items. Yeah. Okay. Th this one will say the paper says what it yep. is. Yep. It'll say who it is and what the, okay. what the error or omission was or whatever in case it was. And we just need a motion to accept the. Oh, uh, we do need a motion. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept the. Correction. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Maybe opposed, abstaining. I have it. So, uh, okay. Moving along. Village of Hyde Park invoice WOC 050122 uh, Prospect Speed. Street riser rings forty one hundred and thirteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Look through that invoice. Why are we paying for water parts? Uh, <laughs> we have we have uh, kind of a changing of the guard, if you will, between the crews. Uh, they just lost their <coughs> new foreman, so I don't know who's going to be the new foreman for the village crew, but that person would generally work with Mark French, day-to-day -day emergencies, <coughs> barring materials, mans, mm -hmm. gravel, whatever. And it used to be that you were able to just kind of, you know, give and take through the year because they had the bucket truck for tree limbs, we had the gravel stored here for water main break. Just happened last weekend on East Main, I think. They borrowed some fresh gravel to fill up water main break. And I don't know if it was the start of this Counting, if you will, of expenses, but the crews would just prefer to keep things kind of level and do those miscellaneous things back and forth and keep it even. The bigger items we've actually started to charge for, like the paving in the bill to do the water main break, which is a little bit different because that was something that the board wanted to be compensated for for the damage to the roads. So they built in hundred thousand dollars into the water project to repair the roads. All of it went to Pitch Hill, because it's simpler to deal with that way rather than scattered around. But we've also started to look at the cost internally, what, how much time highway spends on water projects or on sidewalks, et cetera. Uh, the village does pay for their use of the diesel at the town garage. They don't pay generally for the gravel or sand or the loader time or the town crew's time to bring gravel. That's not being sort of charged. But on the flip side, they've been perfectly accommodating when there's a tree that needs a bucket truck. And they give us labor back. Go so so at, this, at this level, it sort of is okay. We do that with Johnson, we do that with Eden. Yeah. Back and forth. But there's these items that elevate, and then there's these items, which are new. <laughs> so why they're charging for water improvements, you would, you'd almost have to have a story on each one of those risers to see how old it was, was it broken already? They're claiming that the required risers to lift the, basically the cover of these uh, water mains or sewer covers was due to the road. And our, our practice has been, we're doing the road, you have your sewer, everybody does, they do the water sewer, we do the road. So it's kind of a simple, there's no mixing of those things. If they need risers, then they need to plan for the risers. We can't change a road project to lower the road to Right. For the riser because it's too low. See what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. And that's usually part of all our 1111 permits. You know, we have a town highway that needs to be maintained for the travel boat. If you want to share it with water, sewer, electric, Comcast, cable, fiber, those are secondary to the town's road access needs for a lot of good reasons. You don't need to have fiber, but you need to have an ambulance come to your house. That kind of stuff. So that's why we have the priority, if you will. So when they start to charge for some of these things, again, to Matt's question, we don't really have a way to deal with that. So the last couple of board meetings, it was no, that, that's just, just, it's just not right. It's, you know, not even knowing the background. Yeah. It just doesn't that's, feel like, like the town said, should be paying a water bill. 
Well, especially yeah. the first five items, those are an adjustable item that they could have come in. They could have put their manpower and adjusted them. Those are all those valve boxes. Those are, those are all an adjustable valve box. So there's a method and means that we could have looked at. There could have been some pre-planning once they knew we were going after Prospect Street, which was a two-year project. Right. All they said was, we don't have any work in the road. Mm -hmm. We're going in there. We're going to dig that road up. Do you want to do anything ahead of time? That was two years ago. No, we're all set. That was right from the, the boss over there. So they didn't want to worry about it until it was the day of construction, basically. So anyway, that, that's the short story. Mark totally objects to being built like this. He, this is just not anything that he could see for in the highway hood. Uh, we do have an itemized list, which you requested, and we do have uh, a, sort of a need to deal with these things consistently, too. If there's going to be a change of practice where we're going to be charged for water, sewer upgrades, if you will, then we can't provide free gravel and free sand and a free dump truck right. and so on. It's going to go the other way, which is nobody in the offices are going to like that. No, and it shouldn't be, right? right. It shouldn't be that way either. We should be able to. Well, it has been. It, it right, is, we should be able to. Keep, but yeah. This stuff pushes the. Yeah. Pushes that. So I don't know what you want to do. Like I said, the last couple of meetings, it's been just deferred or, or asked for the itemization. Now we, we have all the information. We know why it's here. They're basically trying to get as much revenue from any resource they can get it from because of their situation there. Like charging the legal bills to the water customers. If you guys saw that note in your bill, Rowan, you probably got a bill for that, didn't you? There's a little sticky note yeah. to the water, the water bills. Yeah, due to the county court case, we're charging you extra money now in your bill to cover our legal, which they instituted on themselves. In the first yeah. But I'm at a hard no here. No. Sorry. That, that's Mark. Mark's position is that no, I can't do this. I know. And I think he's trying to protect. We could have we could have gladly paved right over it, and then they, when they need these service items, they could they could sock out them out and then deal with it, and then they could fix the road when they need it. Yes, I'm with him. I know. Mark was in favor of just paving the road and let, let him come back and saw cut it out later. Yeah. You don't want to do that though, because it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Right. There's a lot of decisions that could go bad, you know, not you yeah. know, normally you wouldn't do it that way. But some places do that. You know, just I can I can picture bigger places that just can't the water and sewer can't get there and the paving includes all the other division and they just Yeah. You're on your own boys. Exactly. You know? Yeah. We try not to do that. Well, exactly. And then look, and then look where a year, maybe. And then look where it got us. Right? Especially <laughs> char charging us two hours for their form and come out. Come on. Yeah. No. I'm just trying to set, it'll set a precedent. Well, I can tell you where that come from. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it was the one that left because they started doing that to me on Morse. Anyway, so that's my, that's so do we respond to it or just not pay it or well we probably should i'm just looking at the options yeah I, I, I think we respond i think we should probably respond. based on relationships in the past or we counter offer with a bill for the use of our gravel and everything else if that you know we are i think we 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 can be above that though i think we said yeah. we, we, we say hey look yeah we've had a working relationship exactly this is our town road that we own and needed to have maintenance too. And I think in order for your facilities to be working in the property, this is something that you had to do and make adjustments to. That's called maintenance. Can't expect a system to have no maintenance. Right. Yeah. There you go. You just wrote the letter. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Most of it. I know. Fast talker. I know you. Yeah. <laughs> I get yelled at a word for it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You get some no, but that, I mean it's it, it's logical and makes complete sense. So even to me, who doesn't understand that stuff, it makes sense. Puts an in in balance into the harmonious atmosphere that we've created over the years. That's what we should be. Uh, oh, I'm like, where did that go? No, I was just talking and you looking. Were, at the, you were yeah. using big words there. Too. You were using very big words. <laughs> you dug down deep for those, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, turn the Tony on. So, uh, yeah. Okay. We'll send them a note uh, based on the conversation. No, 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 no response. No. And then wait. Something you scribble on an invoice. Yeah. We're not going to scribble, but. Yeah, yeah. If you rejected something, I'll let them know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
then you send it back. Yeah. Okay. So that, that'll, that'll do that. Sending. Uh, Okay, so moving right along. Um, um, annual financial management questionnaire, excuse me, for uh, FY22. That's this thing, right? Yep. Yeah, that's the thing with the tag that uh, Brian probably will sign as chair. Would you look at that? I, I, I did. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's a summary of our procedures that Kim and Jennifer and I follow along with the department heads. So everything is, um, a lot of that stuff that she's writing in there where it says finance manager are needing to be incorporated into the written policy because it says town treasurer now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So we've moved a lot of stuff from treasurer to finance manager. So the policies are behind. So when she wrote in like finance or, or now finance manager, Now finance, yeah. That's yeah. only because the policy we moved to there. Positions change with job descriptions. Yeah. And the policy has to be updated still. So, yeah. Got it. So that's a good sum. That's a good summary. Yeah, for people that want to get a snapshot. It goes to the state auditor's office. Yeah. They ask every town that I don't know how many towns respond. I know Kim tries to every year. Doesn't look good if you don't, I wouldn't think. <laughs> yeah, <try. laughs> so after Matt gets done reading it, we just need a motion to uh, accept. accept it. As written. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I will make a motion to approve the financial questionnaire. Excellent. Yeah, we can't approve it. Second. Accept it. Oh, sorry, accept it. Yeah. Accept it. Just slightly. Yep. Well, when you second it? Yes. Okay. You, All you the favor signify by saying aye. You got it. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yes. Sure. Anybody opposed? Standing? No, no, sir. And I'll sign it. And Keith Ulrich to uh, be the health officer for three years. We'll pass that now and we'll just take a quick look at it. Is it odd that he doesn't, that this doesn't come up the same time all the rest of us do? No, the fire warden, the health officer, zoning administrator are all on. Different, Whenever different time period? Did, the first time that they run their oh. three year term, four year term. Kind of hard to find them, so maybe we get them. They, they, they hang on to them. Yeah. Yeah. You can draw all the boards and committees usually with a March or April. Yeah. But yeah. These individual positions change. Gotcha. The other state agencies, plans, whatever they got. Never been any issues with Keith, right? No, the only thing that we do is he he and I work uh, together on most cases if there's a case. And because he's willing to do that, I'm able to guide, provide resources so that he's not on his own without any resources. So I have access to BLCT or my own experience or the town attorney if it gets really sensitive. And then we can usually try to pretty quick Forced to fix things or refer them to the state or bring them up to the Board of Health, like on Senator Road. Yeah. So it generally works out okay. He, he likes it. He's, it's a maybe one call a month, I think. But he doesn't call me on every call either. 
Well, I will make a motion to appoint Keith to the three-year term for the health officer. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed, abstaining? Ayes have it. Okay, and going right on to the next one. Um, let's see, VTrans grants and a grant award of twenty-seven thousand for Cricket Hill Road, number G A zero three three six. We have to vote. Annual program. They make. Uh, Awards applications in the spring, awards in the summer, and then they give you about 18 months to finish the work. They call it FY23. Uh, the intention is to look at the state map on where all our roads don't meet the MRGP requirements, which are red segments, and pick those off with state aid money. And what's going to be done up there? There's uh, around the if you're, if you're coming from Route 15 past Jingris, go around a funny curve, S curves right there, yeah, so yeah. the top of the hill, and then it drops down a little bit, and there's a one or two or three culverts headed back up to Battle Road. So those will all be looked. There's a road sign. Half mile segment there, the road's a little narrow, got erosion. We lost four, two of the culverts in Halloween. That oh, we, okay. We redone. I don't know what the red is. I think it's probably lack of ditching. It's burn, like it says burn removal. Yeah. yeah. So the water stays on the road instead of getting off the road. That's and, true. Yeah. So all that yeah. stuff it doesn't help when you have a narrow road and no burns. You don't have any road if the water starts yeah. using the road. So ideally, you kind of uh, maybe a little bit wider road in there, but those culverts are a problem. So I got to look at that. There, there, a lot of the culverts were put into the old road widths from like 40 years ago. And now they're almost the roadways themselves are ten feet taller, so you have no shoulder on top of an inlet or outlet. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's. Is there any big culverts in that situation? There's not one. Yeah, there's one. The other ones are just I think they're drain pipes, but there's at least two that are passing streams. It might be a third one. Yeah, that's very good. So that that's not totally spec'd out yet. It could change. You know, something could change. We could have a washout this fall and rebuild the road under emergency too. And then right. we'd have to find another project next summer. This is really for next summer. Just maybe Mark Mark was trying to get through his list. Um, and at some point he's gonna have a punch list to get before snow. Right now he's trying to get his big projects out of the way, which is the winter salt and Cooper Hill and planning for this one will take. I see they're putting gravel down on Cooper today, I think. Hard, yeah. But trying to get that done. So we need a motion for V grant to accept the grant. Yep, accept the uh, twenty seven thousand for Cricket Hill. So we already have the the award the grant award? No, this is the grant award. We had made the application in the spring. Gotcha. They pretty much budget every town to get a certain dollar amount. Okay. It's usually in the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range. But you have to apply and then then they give you this grant agreement if you gotcha. still want it. You can always say no, and then oh, yeah. somebody else will get it. <laughs> but this just helps us do work that for less local tax dollars. It's oh, still, okay. Still tax, yeah. state tax yeah. money. But yep. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor, say if I was saying aye. 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 Any opposed, standing? No, you have it. <clears throat> okay. So we're done, Bucky. <clears throat> and Bailey's driveway, apron of code of 1560, deferred from August 9th. We need a motion to accept it so we can get done. Uh, yeah, there's a, a discussion, yeah. of course, but yeah. we have the little bit now. Yeah. So we went to, uh, got some quotes from various peoples. Uh, Browns, Hutchins, and Slayton. Yeah, Brown, Brown Sucks and Slate and ECI said no, your local guys can do better. Grays is closed now. I thought they were still open. They said, there? No, Grays paving is no, 
they're not doing paving anymore except right. for small stuff. It used to be one of the competitors for like slate and art. Except for small stuff, and that's not small. I know. Yeah, no, like like not like their repair jobs maybe and stuff like oh. that. They're not taking, oh. they're not taking bids gotcha. on projects. Huh. Probably whatever they need to do on for stuff. But anyway, so we had uh, fifteen sixty. And then Hutchins was twenty five hundred, and Browns was twenty four fifty. With much and with three no bids, <laughs> I, I can't do. Yeah, we can't do any more than that. So the, the policy of how much did that grade change was the pending issue, and, and how it relates to other similar driveways, and whether other ones should be done on a consistent basis, or is it the person that comes to a meeting? And that's I think that's where I was left trying to figure out how from a policy or practical approach. So I talked to uh, Ryan Green, who is the contract manager for the paving project here. He works with Kubrecki. Yep. He's the one that's running around all these hot spots like Mark would do. And I said, so tell me a story. What happened on, on South Village in Stowe? You, you leave almost out of the village just before you get to the, the big gas station that's down there. On the right side, there's, as you're going south, on the right side, there's a couple of houses that are squeezed up against the road. And they raised that Route 100 six, seven, eight inches. And when you're going, you can see they have, I don't even know what, I think they might've put another couple of feet, but they couldn't go any further to, because the house is there. And I've watched medium sized cars go out there and they are really close to bottoming out. I mean, that, I said, well, how did, he goes, that's the best we could do. So he, he didn't say they ignored it. He didn't say that they messed up. He said, that's the best we could do for them. At a certain point, you call it. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what about um, you know, the school over here where we did much bigger aprons? And they said, those are the things that we do. It's like a case by case. However, he did say, they have the benefit of multiple years of planning for the trouble spots. So they already know that they're gonna have a problem with a, almost a contractor needing to use their skills mm -hmm. with the supervisor on site during the day to make it as best they can for that landowner. They, yeah. they know that. Yeah. But they also have a hit list from the design and engineering work yeah. that they know they can't fix it that way. Mm -hmm. If you can't fix 100% design. And that's that was his answer. So not dissimilar from what you all are doing, except for we don't have the plans and we don't have somebody there with a the contractor. Right. So you're ending up doing like three things here with this with that fairly request. Yeah. Why did the contractor pay so much? How much was it before? How much did we actually lift that? How much is our responsibility? How much is Menashe's responsibility? How much is the landowner's mm -hmm. responsibility? And how do you treat the next guy that yeah. doesn't complain? Yeah. Because they don't think they have the right to complain. So who, who um, did you look into Hilda's? Hilda's was skipped by the contractor, totally skipped when they were supposed to come back and do the two or three foot apron. And Hutchins came back and fixed that because they skipped it the first time. That's what, that's what I heard from her. So I have looked at this. I, I, my only concern is, again, we're going to pave this, and then she's going to want, she wants a blue statement. On the rest of the drive? Well. Or does she want statement on the? That's, the, that's what I heard her, she, that brown stuff, she hates the town statement. But, and Rickett was the one asking for paved. Yes. That's the $1,500 option. So do we stop at paving, or do we pave it and then move forward with stay mat behind the pavement as well. How far would we, that old, how far? The 15 is to the edge of right away, about 12 feet from the edge of the travel lane. So that gets us right to the right away. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise going out to the right away ever. Me neither. Right. But if you're in the right away, how much effort is the town's responsibility? Usually it's the two or three feet off the shoulder because of night and probably 80% of driveways are okay with that. Normally it's two foot for residential, four foot for commercial. Yeah, so I mean, we're not we're, we're not doing anything that's out crazy, you know what I mean? We're just trying to figure out how far. If she wants the two to four to be 12, do we pay the whole bill or half the bill because we think the two foot, maybe we'll go four feet on a certain steeper grade, but then everything, everything else is split for the homeowner. We do the, you know, so. A third of it is time and cost, and then we split the final two thirds 50 50. 
but we don't go out the right way. You know, it's got to have some formula that yeah, I agree. That somebody's got to make a judgment call on it unless you want to do engineering. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. Because, you know, you're going to use your fifteen hundred dollars in engineering to come up with oh. with plans and reviews yeah. and all that. Double that. Exactly. So you don't re really want to. We don't do engineering for paving projects unless it's really just one water. So that's that's what I was coming up with in my head. Is like who's going to make the call on that first two or four feet being exactly what we should have done there, and the twelve feet is not what we normally would do, but kind of cost share or no cost share. I think she'd probably be <clears throat> happier. I'm not sure what the cost difference is between uh, steam mat and uh, the crushed uh, pavement. If that was added in, the color would be about the same too. But uh, when you're steam mat, it depends where you get it. Uh, it can be gray, it can be black, it can be. They'd use it. Grimes, Grimes has it. Oh, Grimes has it. She made that exact comment when she was here. Yeah. She wants the blue stuff. Yeah. Um, I love the blue stuff. You want to start with paving it and then if there's any other further issues, address it at that time? Well, I think, oh, no, I think we should say we're going to pave it and this is it. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean if you don't, we don't want to do think both. of the other thousand driveways and how you don't want to have a history with everybody. You want to yeah. say, yeah, we did that project in 22, we're done. And don't, we've, we've, we've I'm wondering if we can give her the quote and could we offer her it's fifteen hundred and sixty dollars and we offer a thousand. Then we're paying for the four foot that we should have, and we're paying fifty percent for the next four foot. And then that would leave her four hundred dollar bill, unless that's unacceptable. Would she be accept would she be I don't know. What's your thought? Speak up. I see you smiling. Nope, I said my piece last time. I got shot down, so it's up to you guys. <clears throat> I think what he just said brings up only because I know exactly the situation in my driveway personally, you know, with center road, so different. I mean, especially that, that stain mat that, or what the town calls stain mat, the gravel has pushed right out of it. And I've, I've replaced with blue stain mat and now my blue stain mat is getting pushed out from the gravel underneath it. So this stuff all makes meeting minute notes. And we will it, say one thing. Yeah. Crush rock and topsoil don't make stay mat. I I'm not disagreeing with you. I I I'm not, I agree with you 100 percent there that that's shouldn't be getting used as stay mat. But so based on your understanding of the conversation, I'm trying to remember back what it was. What do you think that she'll be happy with? I mean, she'll be happy obviously with the paving. And she'll be happy with the pavement, but I think as soon as you pave it. She got me back in here saying, so when the are you going to- The pitch is too steep. No, she's going to say that when are you going to back up the rest of the pavement? Because now i got a lip in my driveway. And I don't want that goddamn brown stuff because that's what she kept saying. I don't want the brown stuff. And I know I can relate to her on the brown stuff because I have the brown stuff in my end of my driveway. <laughs> so I know what she's saying. I don't think that pavement's going to stop the conversation. But again, no different than me or Chas or anyone who lives on Center Road, we have all taken the cost and we have done the maintenance to our own driveways and backed up the pavement. So I think that <laughs> when you own a home, you can't expect it to be maintenance free, right? So we probably should talk to her about making sure the pavement is going to be sufficient before we just prove that we're going to do it. Yeah. Let's pull her in here next week. Right. Or call her, have a conversation with her. The sketch we're using, uh, the mentions we're using is from Mark's conversation with her. Oh, okay. okay. The Mark's doctor. Yeah, and that's where I got the dimensions for the vids. Oh, okay. And then Brickett's the one that said, no, no, I need to, I need to asphalt at that apron because of my plow. Blah, blah, blah. So, okay. I do remember him saying that. So, yeah. But, <laughs> That's fine. If you're plowing a gravel driveway up against pavement, it doesn't matter if it's three feet from the travel lane or 12 feet from the travel it's lane. It's still going to be the same. It's still going to be a point where you're going to hit a joint with pavement. <laughs> so right. the question of what triggers the extra length of the I mean, apron. My honest opinion is we beat $1,500 to death at this point, but at the same time, it's for the next year. And you're setting a friggin' precedence. And I hate setting a precedence because I do this at work. 
all the time. Yeah. Well, we want to make sure that it is going to solve the yeah. issue that she has too. You know, we Agreed. don't want to. Yeah. And it sounds like Bricka and Beth may have different opinions. <laughs> Go back to why I mean, not necessarily, why we but you know, about this because the time, of, from yeah, the time paved the road, mm -hmm. and there was a steeper grade than she prefers. Yeah, and, and you talked about seven percent gross mm -hmm. down and up, delta three percent, four percent, whatever the a total of seven. The paving of that apron should solve, should get there. Mm -hmm. So, if there's a threshold where the town gets involved, if the if the grade is more than mm -hmm. six or something. If you hit that seven, then we have to do more work for you. But under, you know, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mark's gotta know that's flat enough and tell the owner that. We're not gonna do any more for you. We're not gonna add three inches of pavement for 40 feet so you have no transition visible. You know, somebody's gotta call that. Right. And it should be marked during the work, but not every homeowner's home to see it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you get this, then you get your meeting time. So anyway, that's the thing. I remember I remember saying this same talk on Trombley Hill one day with the dooryard. I went up there and we fixed it in just about two hours. It's very easy to fix that one. <clears throat> that's not paving? Yep. But then you're gonna have to do something afterwards. We've gone in circles about this. So I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've pushed this aside too many oh times. God. And, you know, we need to. Well, it's a case study for your policy, but you actually adopt a policy at some point. So. This is a nice policy you wrote. No, no, it's, it's got to be practice. I mean, it's work in progress, yeah, it's but be yeah. practice, too. So, you know, Mark can go up and we can measure things, or Mark can just use his eyeballs and know that this is going to need some extra work and do up to 12 of a apron at max or some that's a softer policy i mean there, there's also some different things like like for like you brought up the kabricki thing there's right of ways and like when the state takes on a job they, they become they make agreements with every landowner too you know they they say okay we're going to be working there and blah 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 we recognize it's our right away however they that, yeah, they'll, they, they'll do they'll be aware of what's going exactly. on exactly so, so like the front the front sheet of every state page has every landowner and it has right away agreement so every one of them have i want better topsoil or i want a, a bigger apron or it's the i want list you know and the state decides whether they're going to pay for it or not and that's that's not fair for us to say that mark's going to go meet with every landowner either so this is a little bit different i mean Should we just be happy that people like me and Chas didn't come here and ask for a big paper? I don't know. Hey, I went through, I went through <laughs> the same thing. I had, I had a lip in my, in my door here. Like, yeah. don't get me started on that. And you fixed it, right? I don't <laughs> comment on that, but I'll tell you. It wasn't a happy situation. Yeah, there you go. I could propose the split based on that simple formula that you were talking about and see if responses and she can come on the 13th yeah. of September and respond. And, right, and we yeah. could, yeah, and we could talk to her a little more about it and maybe you can explain, because- This is double what we normally do and- we're, Well, and yeah. honestly, she's probably like me, like, I don't know if it's gonna make it steeper or not. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I wouldn't think about that because I don't do construction, so. She may not understand that well, either. Well, there again, if, if, if we're providing 66% of the payment and she hires them, at least then she can deal with the contractor. Oh, true. And then she can say, this is what I want. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, she probably would like that. What would happen if, well, what happens if we pay the contractor and she says, that's not what I freaking want. Right. At all. More meetings. More meetings. <laughs> More yeah, conversations. I'm sure she'll be there when it's going to be done, so. Right. Right. But. She may, she may decide to do a whole driveway if you get a thousand dollars. No, yeah. that's very true. She may. It's not that long of a driveway. Right. She may say that. Yeah. 
mean, we recognize that we we should have done an apron, right? So we owe them something. Mm -hmm. So what would an apron cost us? What? We'll do that, and maybe she could work with them to do more work if she wants to. No, initially it was supposed to be an option, it'd be, right? Mm -hmm. So we're just. <clears throat> that can eliminate some of the precedence in the, in the whole thing. We're repairing a, a, a oversight in in the contract is what it is. Yeah. And uh, water so, so, so doesn't one of our, that, that, that eliminates the uh, doesn't one of our board members work from off? <laughs> it, it's a it's a water contract. <laughs> He's like, who oh, me? <laughs> it's a water contract. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. He just took another one of our employees, by the way. Sorry. I'm gonna steal you. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay you money. Just just to prove Nick that just to set a precedence <laughs> with Nick. I start stealing his back. So I like that plan. Do we have a plan? Do we all agree with that? Talk to Ben. Put it, into, uh, put it into a motion. Motion. Yeah. Offer okay, I'm gonna make a motion that we are going to offer Beth thousand dollars. Is that what you said? Yeah, thousand dollars for paving of the apron with uh, Slayton's. <laughs> so we're we're essentially paying for two thirds of the apron rather than going twelve foot. We're agreeing to paying eight foot. Uh, do you want her to hire whoever she wants, and then we get an invoice and we reimburse her? Yes. No. Like that. Actually, that's a good idea. Yes. No. Why? I'm not going to find anybody cheaper anymore. No, we have a contractor right. that could do it. We just right. Do it. And then she could maybe work and with the can. contractor and if she wants to do more. Yeah. And or we can at least talk sure. with her, bring her in. Here's yeah. what we're offering. Well, and I mean, the motion, if it gets passed, is one thing. If it doesn't get passed, we can send her the notes from the meeting and right. say, can you come to help us finish this? Yeah. 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 Why not? We'll move forward with it at least. Yes. Get her involved. We went through it the same thing with this with Cooks. It's, just, it's always the thousand dollar right? Cooks and Story. It's seriously. I went isn't up it? there and we And did what? We solved the problem in about twenty minutes. Oh Cooks my goodness. Yeah. Well, it's fun to talk about it. Twenty minutes, we can Lucky. take it off the next agenda. <laughs> Believe me, it's not a real don't take a rocket site. Let's figure that one out up there. Well, we got two we got three weeks between the next meeting. And I'm not even an engineer. Do I have to sign these? Aren't you an engineer? No. Yes. Yeah. I'm not officially, no. <laughs> I have an engineering degree, but I am not licensed. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, she's passing right. around the warrants now. That's the next thing on the agenda. <clears throat> then we'll need a motion to accept them. I digitally pass it around. Hmm. Todd Monster talking about paving. The state did. They did the town driveway. They did. They did the apron. Um, it was sort of the last minute thing. They called on Tuesday saying we might be there on Thursday, Friday to do your apron, but we see you have an outstanding 11 permit to check the sub base. Any way you can get that done the next day or whatever? And Mark's like, <laughs> quick is here and there. I can saw cut it. And Mark came down and had spent an hour of overtime to get ready for putty. I know, I drove by and saw him working. I'm like, yeah, so he dug around. What's going went on? And he looked and he, he didn't find anything, just missing that material. He didn't find a big problem. Good. So it could have been a combination of slightly different material with a crack in the surface that pumped water in for some reason. Mm -hmm. Don't know. It won't happen. Before. But he was able to come that night on his way to Maine for those two weeks. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, I called Brian. I'm like, why is little putty in the driveway? Yeah, it was a very odd. He told like, me. He's yeah, like, it was, it was last minute, Ron. They called and yeah, so that was, he's awesome like that. Yeah, and the state was good too. Great. Said, you know, we'll do your 15 feet, but we need to be out of our way. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Great. <clears throat> we need a motion to accept the 
Oh, I'll well, make a motion to accept the warrants. Yeah, I'll Want to second it? Signed it. Second, I seconded it already. Yep. Oh, I did. Okay. No, I didn't oh, hear him. Oh, <laughs> favorite thing by Miss Hanoi. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Oh, we're all here. Time. There we go. Is it is it normal to get overtime this year, time of year? Is that yeah. something for projects or not? It depends on what the situation is. That's been approved by Mark overtime. Yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark will use overtime as a little bit budgeted for summer overtime just to finish up a project or like I did calling in at three o'clock to yep. do something until five o'clock. Uh, usually it's miscellaneous stuff. Yep. It's not, and the only time that it gets like planned is when they have been multiple things going on and they need to get it, something done. But it's not, it's not budgeted, let's say, or not planned to yep. expand. It's, it's there. Tries to reduce it. Like the payroll I did today had two hours of overtime, I think, total. It was mostly Mark himself, so that's why I was just asking yeah. if there was a, just a normal use yeah. or whatever. No, that's not normal. That's not normal. Yeah. That was it's usually pretty light in the summer. Okay, the notes from the financial desk. Review memo. Yeah. Yeah, that's a one page memo. Just uh, something we're going to try to do every second meeting of the month. I like that. Just to have a quick, what's, mm -hmm. what's going on, sort of not burying you with 18 pages of small number of paper. Yeah. Because I, I was thinking, it's not useful, if I was a board member, it's not useful to get this much when you've asked for or want to look at this much. Mm -hmm. So that's in her memo, she's asking you what do you all want to see posted on the website? What would you like to get in paper? She can do either one for individual members. Um, but she doesn't want to do anything that's not useful. Right. Because it takes so, time. Yeah, it's a waste of time, sure. So look at the, when, when you have time, when you have like a, some time to look at the finance page, that would be like the core area to post things. Whether yeah, sure. it's the audit or whether it's the, <laughs> you know, budget to actual. Yeah, the budget to, the on. budget to actual is on there for the end of the year, so. Yeah, so all that stuff is, is on there. And as you get into it, maybe you want to see different things. I don't I don't know, but that's what she's asking. Just so she can tailor her workload and get things to you that make sense. Okay. We'll look at those. Yep. Let's see. Um and then the minutes for Well, do we need night. sorry, just quickly, because she's asking about Glenna Pound. Is that something we need to discuss tonight, or well, is that right. something? Yeah, part of that. Yeah, don't get the, don't the text attorney either. I forgot the uh, Yeah, Glenn is working on uh, 20 and 21. And Sarah Macy, who's VLCT sort of support person for Excuse Jennifer, me. Yep. sees the same thing that the board saw when we looked at the lateness of 20. And you extended the contract to do 21, which is supposed to be done in 20. So now we're looking at 22 in the same situation with 20 and 21 pending. And the work that you do in an audit starts to overlap with some of the information that you need for 22. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So the farther you go, it's almost like you're almost forced to continue until you have a clean break. 
which they're saying would be at the end of 22 now, and then turn over all the audits to the new bid process. To because you know auditors will bid based on how your report looks. Exactly. You know, 18 pages of problems or one page of problems. Right. You know those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So without the benefit of being able to show them a complete audit from 2021. Going to bid now to try to get somebody for 22 might be possible, but we can't give them the information that will help them feel good about bidding. So the bid will probably be high. Right. The or it'll be based the on information. To, to be yeah. fair, they have to budget for what they see. Exactly. So, they, yeah. so I explained to Sarah and Jennifer that we had, we've been in this situation with the contract running out and multiple contracts being awarded to one CPA firm, and we need to some point break that and at least be competitive bid of that and even if you're not competitive bid if it's close you almost want a new set of eyes because everybody does some things a little different yep not good or bad but they just look at things different so they're recommending that we at least consider a new contract with glenda to carry on with the 22 whether she could get that done before town meeting day because that's usually our deadline to get the new information to voters is 22 finished in July. Well, that's, that's the key. Can, is she able to do that? She was having issues with Well, we need, we need a new uh, letter from her, engagement letter, which would specify that her goal. Can she produce the 22 by January if she's sort of over promised on 20 and 21 that are now late? And I think. But whatever the comfort level is, it's more of a practical yeah. exercise with accounting. You have all this stuff done. And you have a new um, person that's getting used to Lena right now, so she would have that. If she finishes 22, then Lena's um, relationship with Jennifer would be pretty secure. Exactly. So she can evaluate the new people better. I mean, she's going through what, three different people right now, right? The audit she's doing right now is three different finance people. So that's a lot of auditing. Yeah. Like you're checking three different people's yeah, work. The notes are all different. Exactly. I, you know, I, was, I was looking at one spreadsheet, one spreadsheet where they keep some tasks checked off and all the different initials on there. Yeah. But it really should be one person. Exactly. For one year. Right. And one year had three different initials on it. So. it exactly. Yeah, we had three. We had, we had Ali, Jen. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah one, and, well, yeah. Kim jumped in as well. Oh, and Kim jumped as in. As well as Jen. Yeah, right. So now it's just what. You don't want to have to go through that. Yeah. That was just a big, big, okay. big problem. But um, yeah, and Jennifer will be this whole fiscal year. Yeah, it's all hers. So <laughs> I keep reminding her. So I keep reminding her, 23 is all yours. Exactly. <laughs> She's okay with that. I would like to see a quarterly report, that memory report she asked about. I, I think a quarterly. Quarterly is good. I agree yeah, with quarterly. I don't think we need to go more than that, or that, at least to start, because then you can kind yeah, of see the percentages. A, the, 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 the packet that uh, Wendy came with. Yeah. So the quarter finishes, you know, January, March, probably your second meeting in April, they would have the reconciliations done and whatever. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that would be the plan. Monthly though, you'd get a shorter memo that just says, hey, this is what's been going on. Which yeah. Be, yeah. Which is nice, enough. yeah. That should be enough for now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I just wanted to check out. So yeah. Talk to Jennifer about it. Okay. And then now the minutes for August 9th. I looked at them, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. From second. August 9th. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Okay. Okay, so under other business, one thing I did put on there too is um, we got a email. I got an email from Tim from the union, wanting to know what our status is on uh, um, wanting to reopen the contract and and discuss uh, increases due to the current rise in the uh, the economy the way it is. 
got the uh, right. We had kind of pushed it off. We yeah, you can do the executive right? session thing because it's contract negotiations. You can talk about it generally, you know, outside the meeting because there is a lot of scuttlebutt lot about retainage and pay and all that stuff. Uh, there's less talk about inflation, which is trending down. Yeah. Um, so when people are looking at eight, nine, ten, the sky's the limit. That's mm -hmm. when we got the request to reopen the contract. Now it's back down to seven, maybe next month. So uh, the if we all recognize that every every employee is in the same boat, they're not they're not special. You know, they're they're human beings that are trying to live. Uh, they're protected by the union contract, which is closed at 3%. The other employees got 4%. And if they're talking about retainage, even as a veiled threat of some sort, you know, like, oh, there's other places offering a lot more than Hyde Park, and we're going to be at the bottom again. I think that's a roller coaster ride of Hyde Park since I've been here. It's not right. just down up. To, you know, you just, nobody can keep up with everybody. So you end up looking at other towns. Um, you could talk about retainage. Uh, Lump sum that does not respect the base, which would, which would allow more time for the inflation to modify a little bit so that when you get down to December, January, you'll have better inflation numbers to figure out if you need to make a base adjustment. The uh, gross amount, you know, some dollar amount that you kind of come up with that responds <coughs> to the inflation, but doesn't adjust the base wage for everybody. If inflation is going to be a spiky thing and it's going to be over with. Um, so some companies, if you read national news, are doing some of that business. They're, they're, the, first, the first step to retainage for a big corporation is to recognize the problem and give them a base cash payment. Doesn't affect the long-term health of the company if they have the cash on hand. The worst case scenario is to give them 15, 20% because you think the inflation rate is going to get there. And then you're stuck with it. So those are those are the two extremes. You don't necessarily want to ignore it. I guess I want, I'm not recommending that. Um, yeah, but you know. But you can say hold your breath for another month, maybe. But you promised to have a I was going to say we did kind of make a date. But how do how are we coming up there with the cross training? Cross training. Should we uh, go into executive session? That's what I'm thinking. We'll wait and uh, we'll just clear up a couple more things, and we'll be ready for the. Uh, Basically, it's just the uh, fundraising for the Lamar Valley Rail Trail Art uh, thing, and then there's the Sheriff's Department on Thursday. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah give me an update on the other two execs, too, if you want. Yeah. And we just have one left. Yeah. So let's go into, let's pause that, and then we'll, uh, we'll go into executive session and... Okay. Uh, why can't we do the rest of them and then do a one in the second session at the end? That's a brilliant idea. That's what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were going to do it. I thought you were going to do it. Let him rip him off. He's going to go in the second session. Me too. And okay. come okay. back okay. out and talk about that. Me too. Okay. Yeah. So $8,600 out of 20000 How much? $8,600. Oh, nice. That's a lot more than last Two weeks time. left on the, on the art project fundraising. Susan's been very active, she even with the loss oh, of her husband. Oh, yeah. So she's been, uh, keeps her occupied. Doing, yeah, I think she picks some time every day. Yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, Virginia Brooks or Withy is oh, helping out a lot. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Diamond Steen was helping. Oh, yeah. So there's a few people that are still active, just trying to put. Like Amy's putting things on front Facebook and front porch, and yeah, kids was, trying to do. I was bit. too. Yeah. So we got a lot of 50s and 100s and 200s. Uh, there's some bigger ones that are coming in the next few days. You know how you, yeah. All I say is I'm watching the intake. You guys are out there hitting the streets. I'm not doing that. Yeah. If they're feeling good. That's great. Well, 8600 is great. Two, I mean, think well, over yeah. 60 donors. Oh, see, that's great. It's not, it's that's not good. somebody dropping a big check. It's the 50s and 100s. Nice. That means I mean, a lot of people are interested. I think it's a great idea. But those, each panel, is that going to be like stained glass or what is it going to be? In? Sandwiched. It's a it's a high gun shot proof glass that sandwiches the art in between. So it can't so be destroyed or stone break it or anything? No, no, it's, it's a... The made, average out of about 18, 1800 a piece. It's made for um, outdoor damage, basically. <laughs> Good. And the process, because they're individual panels, there'll be 20 panels, you can re-quarter those. No, it's not like it's fixed art with hand drawn stuff. It's the image 
gotcha. being used in between blasts. Okay. So mm -hmm. the reproducible, so if somebody really creates a problem. Good. On the uh, sheriff, just a reminder for tomorrow night at 5 30, I'm sorry, Thursday night, pizza provided by the sheriff. <laughs> I think he's got a big ask. Wait, do we have a special meeting Thursday night? Does that make sense? Thursday dinner, right from your shop to sheriff's office. Okay. Pizza and soda, usually. Oh, okay, and we're all meeting there? Mm -hmm. all, the, all three towns or select boards were invited. Okay. I mean, it's not mandatory. Yeah. But Yep. But he wants everybody to highly hear recommend hear the bad right? news all the ones, I guess. So, so. I can make the budget's it. probably not going down. Right. And then in October, he'll be back with the my formal budget presentation. Uh, that's right there. session for that's uh, 25. Yep, right there. Nothing new. It's not online. The only oh, thing new, staff should we? Should, yeah, no. no. Are we going to go yeah. into Oh, no. Oh, session. okay. Sorry. Sorry. So there's nothing new on Minaj other than they're. Pursuing a survey, which is um, which would be part of the offer because it's going to determine what the final acreage is. Then they sort of do some wastewater work for septic for the granddaughter's house that's oh, really? on the twenty or near the twenty five. So they, we don't know the acreage of the new lot yet. Yeah. So without that information, there's no new information on the P's purchase and sale agreement. Uh, the more so sand and gravel. Is in environmental court. The uh, attorney for Jim Harrison filed a statement of questions in, in, in the court that basically said, uh, Can we talk about Saturday hours? Oh. So, how you resolve that, you can do that in executive session. You could say, Can you come in and meet with us at your next meeting so we can hash it out? It's one item. Sounds like it should be talked about. Yeah. Not a formal yeah. mediation with a mediator. No. You know, but Jim could come in with his engineer or something and exactly. talk to him if he's interested in that. Yeah. I think the attorneys have to get permission because everybody's represented. Oh, yeah. So I mean, details can be worked out and Jim's willing to do that. I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Do it's much easier. Yeah. So it's one it's item. I think I would hope we could figure it out together, right? Yeah. With him. I yeah. It's one, it's one ask, but. Like I say, you know, with every zoning application like that, it's been through hearing, multiple hearings with all the right. neighbors, negotiating pros and cons, and it came up with a final decision. Yeah. And they appealed that decision on one issue. Does that mean that all those other issues that they were given to them go back on the table because the DRB took away Saturday? Um, you know what I mean? We gave you a bunch, but we had to take something to mitigate that impact. Oh, yeah. So it is one issue, but it's tied in with the gotcha. overall permit. See what I mean? I do. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, I don't know how you resolve that unless you actually go to Jim and yeah. say, hey, Jim, you know, well, tell us more. Why exactly. Do you, why do you want this? So then you guys can hear it firsthand. Yeah. So I can offer that to them. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, that's a good I mean, idea. Try to keep the attorneys out of it as Absolutely. much as possible. They, you know, they're not, I think you all need to talk about it. Yeah. But, Anyway, I'll, I'll propose that and see what happens. Okay. That was it. So we need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second? Second. Well, we're just waiting missing the mic. Hi. Hi. He's over here taking a nap. I was watching you. Oh. <laughs> you haven't spoken up tonight. Okay, we're coming out of executive session. Michelle, so, Stephanie, and uh, we need uh, a motion to uh, authorize uh, Fletcher. Is it the term? Yes, it's a little page Fletcher to work 50, with the delivery tax. Thirty-nine, forty-eight. I make a motion to approve Kim. <laughs> to delinquent work tax collector. The delinquent tax collector. Yeah. To work for the next for, three years. For the next three years. Need a second. Second. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And you'd be opposed and stating the ayes have it. So, and then uh, uh, we have come to an agreement for the, uh, the union. Um, we've agreed to a concept and it will be discussed on September, our next meeting, September 13th. 
And just a reminder for everybody that home day is September 17th. And uh, Chastity and I will be marching in it, holding a picture of Roland Bowman. <laughs> Now we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Or he goes much crazy.